Hi, thank you for tuning in to Food for Thought, our new series. I'm Deborah Walker, and I'm broadcasting with Natural Health Radio today, so hi to the audience out there. If you've got any feedback and comments, please write to me at Deborah at naturalhealthradio.co.uk. Come and tune in to us. We have 24-7 radio with experts and practitioners who want to share their information with you. We're on Twitter under at Nat Health Radio. Facebook, you've got no excuse but to communicate with us at all. We're on SoundCloud, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, woohoo! We are everywhere, to be absolutely honest. So I've got a brand new series of pods for you for the rest of 2015. I'm working on the title of Phenomenal Women, and you'll understand why when I tell you about who's coming up. But the first person I'm actually going to be interviewing for today is Gabriella Guglia Minotti, Travel, and hopefully I've got that name right, Gabriella. And she's the author of a lovely book called Antarctic Odyssey, A New Beginning, which chronicles her change after the breakdown of her marriage. She also runs a business called Flying Inspiration. She is a pilot, she's a workshop leader, and she's a female cycle consultant. How could I not speak to Gabriella? Hi, Gabriella, how are you today? Hello, Debbie. Well, impressive introduction. And gosh, I better go because <laughs> I'm not sure if I can stop, stand up to that. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Now, tell me about your inner journey that the Antarctic Adventure took you on in 2008 that you've chronicled in your book. Yeah, um, I, uh, it was a journey before, during and after, actually. <laughs> but let's start uh, chronologically. I went through a very tough period between 2005 and 2007 because it was uh, uh, a period of change for me. I was married and not at work. At the same time, my marriage was definitely on the rocks at the end of its road. And um, I felt uh, that big things were ahead of me, for me, actually. Uh, but uh, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was just terrified, to be honest. Uh, but as happens in life, you know, one step are the other, uh, after the other one, and, and you move, even if very slowly and it feels like nothing is changing, you do move. And so it happened for me, too. So went through the legal process, then I was... Uh, Tamping for work. I also decided to train in neuro-linguistic programming um, because I've always been interested in the mind and uh, the unconscious uh, and all these type of things. So uh, little by little I was rebuilding confidence and uh, putting back together the pieces of Gabriella that had been scattered all around. <laughs> and... Um, at the finishing of uh, the end of the legal process was in 2007. And uh, funnily enough, uh, two days late after the final court hearing, I came across this, um, this, this, it was a, it was an event where there was this, um, Australian, um, uh, explorer who was actually, um, Proposing selling uh, to you know uh, who was interested, of course, to go with him to uh, Antarctica, and uh, I'm a free spirit. I was born like that. I, if the, if there is one thing I can say, I'm addicted to is traveling. I really am intrigued by that. Besides nature, uh, and oh, what a better place to see nature if not uh, Antarctica, really. And so I um I thought. I talked to him, and while I was talking to him, I realized that uh, he possibly was doing what I wanted to do. So I thought, oh, I have to go and check it out. And so I did. So I signed up for this expedition, and uh, and that was only June 2007. And I didn't depart. I didn't depart for South America until uh, March 2008. So it was, that's why I said it's a, it was journey before, during, and after. Because those nine months... Uh, after signing and committing to it and uh, then uh, really leaving UK for South America, it was an interesting journey in itself. And just as well, I had some uh, tools to keep myself in check because the mind <laughs> can uh, take you to wonderful places and also can take you to horrible places. <laughs> it's like uh, I like to compare the mind to a horse that 
you have to manage the horse, otherwise the horse manages you. And because it's a big animal, right, <laughs> we'll always have the upper hand on you. And the same thing with the mind. If you are not uh, really the master of it, but you allow the mind to become your master, then uh, you you are in for a ride. Anyway, um, I, I did whatever I, I thought it might be useful for preparing myself physically and mentally and emotionally as well for this trip to the unknown, really, because the purpose of the group was to go there, not just to see penguins, because uh, they're cute, okay, by, but that wasn't the purpose. The purpose was to go there to face fear, to basically to put yourself in a strange, different environment where you could test yourself, really. And for a master practitioner of NLP, what a better challenge than that. <laughs> that was really the appeal for me. But I was, um, before, in those nine months before departing, I was thinking, what is for me? What, what it could be a challenge for me? And I couldn't find any. But I knew, though, that the challenge is the he appears when you're ready and where you are on the spot <laughs> in good universal timing or however you want to put it, uh, your challenge will meet you. And um, it did. <laughs> and so <laughs> this journey became a journey from hell <laughs> for me. And um, I would have never expected to, to be something like that. And so so uh, I kind of... Um, you know, when you are really tested, I have to, 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 to declare this just out of fairness. You can be a Nobel Prize winner. You can be the super scientist. You can be the super psychologist. You can be whatever you want. If you're tested and the test is the right for you, everything goes down the drain or out of the window if you prefer. And you're basically just, you find yourself with yourself, your fears, and that's it. And it can be a scary place. <laughs> Actually, even very scary. Um, but it seems that uh, that's the way we grow. So there's no really um, any... You can't really try to avoid them because life will always present you with the right thing for you. And that's what happened uh, What happened during my journey. But uh, I... I uh, I didn't plan to write a book at all. I was, uh, I had different plans. I wanted to produce a documentary, hoping to, um, produce something of value that could, uh, then help or, or impact other people's life. Um, because I realized that, uh, yeah, I was a bit mad and I decided to go for it, but I, I also find myself, um, I also find myself in a, uh, privileged position to be able to do it and so I felt almost like kind of a duty of care or a duty of uh, um, of, uh, of offering also something back rather than just uh, you know I wasn't going there just to, to take good pictures uh, even yeah. if I'm, I'm, I'm a keen photographer and um, I, I, I love uh, eyes I love the 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 lights and and I was I mean I dreamt of that for nine months you can imagine <clears throat> by the time I was actually on the blooming boat I was just like I know I couldn't even feel you know the the, the ground <laughs> below my feet I was so excited and uh, you can imagine when uh, well you can't imagine but I'm telling you the big <laughs> test for me was uh, you know I right there and the first day I was setting step, putting my feet on the ground, I, I, I lost everything. So I, I found myself with the thing that I wanted the most, that I, that I looked for, for 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 nine months, you know, and, and everything that I was just dreaming to create. And, and it, I, basically it was gone in a few seconds. Uh, to be honest, on the spot, the, the com, you know, the com, when I realized, that actually to lose your gear is not that important because if you lose your life, it might be more impactful for you. <laughs> um, it, it happened while I was uh, slightly starting coming out of the trauma of the shock, but to be honest on the spot, it felt like dying 
because it, it couldn't have been something worse for me. So <laughs> to be honest, uh, sometime I'm, I'm sharing this because I, I, I want to to share the fact that sometimes in our life we go through some tests that are so terrible for us. Of course, they are well designed for us, <laughs> ad hoc, <laughs> that uh, it can feel like uh, like going through death. You know, and uh, but the thing is, that's the purpose of the challenge: the, the to to test you so that you have a chance to dig deeper, because there's always a deeper, and uh, to find out more about yourself. So, to cut the long story short, what happened was I came back to UK after traveling through South America on my own as well, and I was you know, with this idea of producing a documentary. And I couldn't see anything else but that. And after three years, uh, this had, hadn't happened yet. I hadn't found the right content. I didn't have the funding. And, and so I kind of uh, surrender. And when we surrender <laughs> and we pull the oars in the boat and we just say to, okay, let's say, take me wherever. And so we put ourselves in a place of respect in receptive place where we open up and say, oh, I don't know what to do. Let's see what happens, basically. Um, th- then something always happened. And what happened to me was the simple uh, idea of, well, I can still write a book about it, can't I? I, I and, and so I thought, ooh, why haven't I thought about that earlier? <laughs> <laughs> now, you have a lovely passage in the book where you say our life unfolds in a circle more than in a linear way, where there isn't a precise beginning and an end, but it is continuous unfolding of creation with our soul at the centre of our, of this process. Now, it goes on to talk about, you know, the end of your marriage and things like this, but, you know, so many women now and so many people lose themselves in relationships and in in marriage. Why do you think that that's the case? Oh, I have uh, just the answer, um, and, and, and not because I think I know it all, but simply because uh, just thinking of what I went through, uh, I, I can easily see now with hindsight, with the benefit of hindsight, you know. Um, what happened to me? I, I'm a very, let's suppose, let's say, no, let's not suppose, let's say, Let's give myself some credit. I'm a very intelligent woman who speaks four languages, who is highly educated and all the rest of it. And uh, I didn't think much of myself, though. And I'm saying this to clarify the fact that you can have all the degrees in the world, all the recognitions, awards, and everything. That doesn't mean that your self-worth and self-confidence is equivalent to those degrees. And I was an example of that. Um, and so uh, here I am in my blooming years, in my 30s, and um, I find a, a man, in uh, not because I was looking for, I was working in the Maldives, funnily enough. I was working there. I had a contract of three months with a, an Italian tour operator um, to be a rep there. So I meet this gentleman, British, and... Um, as it happens sometimes, I fall in love with him. And then uh, I decided to go, uh, once I finished my contract, to come and visit him. He happened to live in London. And uh, to visit him just to find out what was this uh, big fuss about him or whatever was happening with me, I couldn't understand. And uh, and then I realized that, yeah, I had fallen in love for this, uh, with this man. And uh, he... he he, he basically took me to move quite quickly, uh, leave my country and everything else, and move to UK. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, especially for an adventurer like me. It was good fun and very exciting. But I didn't realize at the time that, that the simple truth of if you don't have awareness of yourself, you're bound to sooner or later to lose yourself, simply because you don't know any better. So what I what happened to me, I found myself in this very exciting new life uh, in London, and then uh, where I really started 
from from scratch in a way. Um, and I, you know, I improve my jobs, I move forward different companies and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it all was kind of I even got married eventually. But then what happened was uh, I wasn't doing uh, uh, having jobs that were fulfilling me, but I, I was just uh, keep doing and keep going simply because I I I I, I was afraid of letting go of everything and I was afraid I couldn't you know my ego was uh, very keen on on uh, paying for my living costs and all the rest of it there's nothing wrong with that but in the meantime what happened was you were to exhaust yourself through work, jobs and work that doesn't fulfill you then at the same time you have possibly like how it happened to me a marriage and relationship that drains you all the time well, no surprise that uh, sooner or later, rather sooner possibly, you start feeling depleted. And then, so you have the psychological exhaustion, the, the physical and emotional. And if you are not really, if you have little awareness of yourself, meaning what are your values, what you stand for in life, what it really makes you feel happy, and all these things that might be it might be perceived like um, something that is not necessary to know, but it is vital. Because when you start feeling stress, uh, drain, exhaust, and all the rest of it, if you're not clear who you are, you just, uh, you just drift. And I drifted a, a lot to a point that uh, I, I, the, everything got so bad, um, well, my relationship was an abusive one, uh, not necessarily physically, but uh, I would classify it as a, an emotional and psychological abusive relationship, um, like many others out there. And uh, I'm a very sensitive person, and uh, I didn't notice all these things. They just, uh, it felt like, I know, they fell on me. Obviously, they didn't fall. They didn't fall on me. I chose those. But unconsciously, so I put myself in a corner because unconsciously I knew I had to find myself. And that was a shortcut. It was very painful, but it did the trick because when you, you are put in a corner uh, and you have nothing to lose because you are just not present to yourself any longer, it's like the little mouse put in a corner can even have enough courage to bite a lion. But why? Because it has nothing to lose. Uh, the only option is death. So, you know, and that's what happened to me. I found myself to a point where I, I, I felt, you know, I was dying. I, and if I kept going, I'm, that's possibly what could have, uh, could have happened uh, further down the line. And so it was only in that moment of desperation that I found enough courage to say to myself, enough is enough. And so that was uh, then the starting of a new journey for me, a journey that was terrifying because uh, um, I was alone. Uh, I'm still am in UK. I don't have any kind of acquaintances or uh, relatives or, you know, that I could cling on, um, especially back then also all friends and relatives that were kind of connected through either work or, or the marriage, they were, they disappeared. So I literally find myself alone and, um, I, I am a lonely type of soul. So I never, I never saw that as a problem, but the problem becomes in the moment when you are kind of in crumbs you are falling apart, then obviously not being with it, meaning your your soul is kind of disrupt, and you as a person that are run down, even physically, it's very difficult to find a center in yourself. It's very difficult. And uh, maybe you might even have a, a big ego that tells you, oh, no, don't, don't ask for help because that's, uh, you know, it's just unacceptable. And so you keep call, going on your own, and sometimes having enough courage to ask for help is a very clever thing to do. But it took me a long time for me to ask for help. 
and I'm sharing this because I know it's typical feminine. Uh, it applies to so many women. We 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 are very good at questioning ourselves first and um, thinking that all is wrong with us. And many times it's not the case. It's not wrong with us. It's wrong with what we chose that created our reality. And so we might find ourselves in very narrow places, like um, maybe we are in a relationship that doesn't fulfill us, it, it's actually killing us, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something physical. And we might put ourselves in jobs that we really couldn't coerce, and so that kills us again, mentally, psychologically. And there are many examples. So the thing is, why do I say now I have an answer? Yes, I have an answer because just several years later, I came across uh, a psychotherapist called Alexandra Pope, and she put together a body of work around the menstrual cycle. And you might think, well, what does have to do with the rest. It's got a lot to do with the rest, and I tell you why. I uh, was missing my cycle at a certain point because I was going through such a stressful period, okay, period of time. And I knew that there was something very important for me there to look into, but I didn't know where to look to have some kind of information that wouldn't be along uh, the normal way, which is normal medicine, you know, just going to a GP or gynecologist, etc. Fortunately, I've been in personal development since my early 20s, so I was aware of alternative medicine, of uh, Eastern diagnosis, and, and, and many different things that uh, had opened my horizon a lot. But still, when we all find ourselves with a pain or a problem, it's almost like kind of our broad horizons, they shrink all of a sudden. And all we, know, we, 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 we want is to solve the problem. And when we are in that situation, not necessarily we, we consider many options, for instance, or we are not present to ourselves like if we were in a relaxed situation, okay? And and so we just go for what is out there, is more accessible. And I'm saying this because it's so easy, especially for women, you know, you find yourself in that situation where you really don't know how to make ends, ends meet and you start having a physical problem, but of course it's your body talking to you, but, but you just want to sort it because maybe you are in pain. And then there might be the aggravation of many other reasons, like kind of, I don't know, first thing comes to mind, if you are an an, an immigrant woman, for instance, you might have visa problems, all sorts of different problems. So when you put everything on your plate, it comes a mess, basically, and it's really difficult to uh, find a way out. Now, because I was aware of uh, um, alternative uh, things, therapies, etc., I knew in that moment that I, I realized that I had to do something about this, I knew that I could find a better answer in an alternative field rather than just via the normal official ways, you know, where you can find solution. So trusting that there is a higher intelligence looking after me or somehow sending me good stuff, I thought uh, to put out a a request, prayer, put it in whatever you prefer, that I wanted to, to, to be enlightened about this because it was something important regarding my body and my body is obviously intertwined with my soul, my spirit, who I am. And so I, I, and then I forgot, I forgot about it. So in 2009, I, um, I received out of the blue, I don't even know how the connection was, this email about a conference call. And I found it quite uh, interesting because the title was The Wisdom of Menstruation. And it was happening on the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. And I thought, oh, how how serendipitous, how funny, look at this. So I listened to this and uh, it, it really intrigued me. And I thought, oh, I have to go to this workshop. And so a week later I went and that day, I found myself, it was in London, so I was in the room 
with uh, many different women coming from different, you know, different backgrounds, different countries, etc. And it was really highly interesting because uh, that day I realized that basically I had been uh, um, uh, kept in the in, in the in, in, in ignorance about something that every woman should have access to which is basic grounding knowledge about how our body works. And as a woman, uh, as we all know, we menstruate every month for at least 30, 40 years even sometimes. So it's a huge chunk of our life. And how come that uh, we are just uh, possibly past the info that, well, it can be dangerous once you menstruate because you can get pregnant. So then um, they tell you possibly about, besides wearing tampons or uh, pads, you know, they tell you about uh, contraception. But again, even that chapter is a, is a very tender chapter because... It, it, there isn't enough information about all the counter effects, counter, uh, you know, side effects of uh, um, oral contraception that can be really dangerous and at times can, well, some women die. But uh, all this stuff, you know, is, is not uh, given to you because there are so many interests. I mean, you know, pharmaceutical companies do make a lot of money out of all this ignorance. It's down to us as women to get information for ourselves because we know that there is something better for us. But basically what happened to me that I, I want, uh, then I decided that day that I would share it for the rest of my life is basically that day I realized if I'd known this basic information about my cycle, when I was starting, so in my teens, you know, and in my, definitely my early 20s, I would have developed emotionally, psychologically, as a different woman. There was no doubt about it. And uh, I realized that, like me, there are millions of women out there in the same position. And because I was in London, and I, in that room, uh, we were roughly 30 women, um, there were so many women that came to that workshop because they are regularly in pain. And fortunately, i never been in pain so because of my feminine cycle. So uh, I, I, you know, to become uh, face-to-face, to get face-to-face with uh, such realities, you know, it was really shocking for me because there were women in pain, women that would attach uh, to menstruation uh, a sense of guilt, of being dirty and ashamed, uh, and you can go on. And and I thought, well, how come something so natural? Nobody would be alive without that because nobody could be brought into this world without a menstruating woman, you know? So why well, is it connected to the life force, the life, the, to, yeah, the, the, the force that creates us? So how come that we have reduced this thing to something dirty and, and full of shame? And it's ridiculous. Well, do you think that's the case? Well, I my my uh, so far the best the best uh, thing that came up for me is pondering about the subject is that like everything else that has got power it becomes a taboo. Another example could be money, uh, spirituality in itself. You know, there are taboo subjects, uh, sex, uh, and but by taboo. Uh, um, I can explain even better. A taboo subject is something that you wouldn't talk about it in a public place, loudly shouting. And I don't know if you notice, but so many of us, if they have enough courage to talk about menstruation, they at least look around <laughs> to see how many people are around, and then they lower their, 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 their tone of voice. And that tells you that obviously something that is is considered not a, a thing to talk about or not in an environment which is more social. So my question is why? 
Uh, is it, but the same thing is about, for instance, sex or money. Yes, you might think, oh, well, we are in Western society, we talk about these things, etc. It's true, but the proof that is the, these subjects are still taboo is the fact that you can take any paper, any magazine, any tabloid, and you start browsing them, and you will find at least an article about the subject. And this means that we are now swinging to the opposite of the pen with the pendulum, right? Before it was, we wouldn't talk about this stuff. Now we talk all the time, but talking about it all the time doesn't mean that, that it is not taboo anymore. Because you swing from repression, you swing to the opposite. You know, you put everything in the open, but that doesn't mean that it still runs you. We are still uh, so much conditioned by all this stuff. And if you think about menstruation, it's strictly related to our sexual life, of course. And so what's a better way to keep women in check, in control, than keep them in, in ignorance, basically, and uh, withdrawing from them the very tool that is, our birthright, <laughs> which is, you know, the beautiful body we have that is so magical and that um, every month gives us wonderful different states because the cycle in itself is uh, uh, it's not just the, the week when we bleed, it's just the whole month. And in that whole month we have... Uh, um, uh, we go through different, I call them season, uh, but through different energies. So basically, if we are not aware of what's going on in our body, we are missing out, basically. That's what I, I realized that day when I went to a workshop and I realized I missed out on this knowledge, on this self-development <laughs> natural course <laughs> that all women have, but very few possibly use it because it's something that is considered like kind of uh, uh, yeah, it's considered taboo. Um, do you think that there's been a conscious suppression of women's knowledge about their bodies? Well, now, the ins and outs of what happened in history uh, I wouldn't dare to go in there to go there. <laughs> I mean I, I, I don't know I, I, my, my inclination okay, let's say, let's put it in this way my feeling or inclination or guess is that in the last uh, three, four, five, th four thousands of years, uh, definitely mm, the patriarchy took over for sure compared to, but even longer than that. Um, you know, the, the, the civilization where the godmother was uh, worshipped, they, they are so much more ancient. And uh, anyway, uh, you know, we also know that even uh, history books that are written just with the little information we have at the time, so, you know, they will change in the future when we'll find more stuff. But basically, there was a time on the planet where there was possibly matriarchy. That doesn't necessarily mean it was better. Uh, but what we, to just to be more factual and, 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 and uh, realistic and uh, close to today, in the last four or five, whatever, thousands of years, we have lived in a world that is steeped, deeply steeped in, in, in the male uh, values, which is basically Again, not to say that men are bad, but it's just, you know, money becomes important. Uh, everything that you work becomes important. You know, uh, conquering and conquesting the world is important. Um, everything is considered something like kind of uh, the planet is considered something that is outside you that you have to discover conquest, you know, conquer and dissect and find out and use, etc. There's no no awareness that actually the planet is us because we are highly dependent on that. And in majority of uh, of different um you know civilization was always considered as a mother, as a feminine. 
simply because you know we were more connected to the earth realizing we cannot live without it so that's possibly why we develop we develop unconsciously you know um uh, as collective uh, beings we develop this kind of uh, uh, worshipping something that gave us uh, sustenance so uh, but that means that if something that feeds you like your mother you wouldn't kill your mother that's the thing you would nurture your mother and you would say thank you so the female say energy is uh, is a nurturing energy that obviously complements the male energy which is much more outward, linear, and, uh, you know, originally there were hunters and uh, uh, gatherers, meaning the women would be gatherers and the uh, men would be hunters. So you can imagine that in a life like that, in the beginning, you know, men develop skills. They are more uh, uh, prone to make you efficient and successful in the outer world, whereas women would, uh, you know, give birth and have children and would possibly stay at home and cook and all the rest of it. So you, you, you develop different skills. It's just different skills. So, um, you know, for a mother also giving birth physically herself, it's almost like kind of more difficult than to kill the baby, right? It's an instinct. And so well, well, I think what happened through thousands of years, you know, because uh, men have started running the world, we, we have lost uh, all the, in, you know, the value, they are more feminine. And so well, for whatever reason, we, we have uh, trodden a, a, such a path. And uh, even if we... We are just born in the 20th century ourselves. I mean, ourselves as uh, you, Debbie Walker, me, Gabriella, you know. But uh, we carry in our genes, in our body, the memories of our ancestors. So, in a way, the conditioning that we have right now is not really just something that we we undergo in our life uh, because of the media, of the education, or, or is something much an, more ancient, you know. So in a way, it's like a, comparable a bit to, for instance, some uh, basic phobias that we all have, like for snakes or insects, you know. Uh, originally, possibly, that meant, uh, had a sense, made sense, because living in the jungle, you are kind of bound to encounter a big insect or a reptile that might kill you, right? So, in a way, um, we developed that fear because it, it was sustaining, it was useful, it was sustaining you more longer possibly on this planet because if you were afraid of these things, you would, you would take precautions. And that's the same. Then when we evolved, we, we developed obviously other fears uh, and other habits that possibly, they might have been good in the beginning, but mm, they make no sense in the 20th century. Forget about the 21st. And so I think in a way, we as women, we kind of, uh, um, we severed our bond, you know, uh, with our body. And uh, we, we basically, we didn't realize that more and more through the centuries, but basically we, we started to consider our body as, as an object, like men see it as an object, is a, 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 an alluring, very ple- pleasurable, a nice object to look at, but it's got a wisdom in it. And if we are not getting the wisdom as well, then we 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 we, we it's very easy then <laughs> to have no self worth, you know, no no recognition of who we are. And going back to the fact of what I experienced myself, yeah, highly educated woman, but a very low self-esteem and self-worth. So it's equal trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Our cycles can tell us a huge amount about ourselves, don't, can't they? And it is fascinating when you're talking about the male values t- taking over in society. I think that that's very relevant about uh, medicine. I think for a long, long time it was very male-dominated. 
And interestingly enough, um, it's now becoming very female dominated. And actually, as soon as it started to become female dominated, there's a big outcry about, about the fact that it's becoming feminized. But I do think women are trying to find refine their role as healers in our society in a very um, patriarchal society and with science being so dominating that is now becoming their main route in and it, unfortunately um you know as you say the wisdom of our our bodies is is still lost in that sea of medicine um and it, it is coming down to almost the healers the old-fashioned healers to re-educate isn't it yeah, and uh, while you were saying all this, I was just thinking, let's just think of uh, the gynecological world. Uh, most of them are men. It's, isn't it? It's, 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 this is ridiculous. How can a man, excuse me, who's got a penis and not a vagina, can have the, the slightest ideas of what goes on in a female body? Well, I think the interventions that they that are actually carried out at times, um, the the removal of areas of the female anatomy clearly show the the lack of um, understanding in regards to how that um, how that system actually needs needs it there to actually be able to continue functioning. Um, and so I do, you know, I do think there's there's a um, the, the the patriarchal approach as in medicine has become very much um, almost treat everything like a disease state so so our menstruation is actually wrong and is it you know if it's slightly out of balance it's wrong rather than it's giving us a message well actually that's wrong so put us on the pill um something's not happening with the ovaries correctly right well we'll put you on this so in effect it's 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 being treated almost in an industrial way rather than actually as a messaging system, as a communication system in regards to, you know, it telling um, that, you know, you, the woman, clearly that something's not happening in the way that it should be doing and, and that if you listen and, and change things, it will come back into balance. Why is that so many women... They just put basically themselves, they carry themselves, you know, really, like their body. They take them to the GP, then they, they move it, then they, they are passed to uh, the, the gynecologist, then they pass to the surgeon. But basically, they go through all this process, you know, of, and then eventually, unfortunately, many times it happens that women are put through surgery, you know, because as you said, the removal is just the, is seen as the ultimate uh, finishing, closing of the of the subject, right, of the matter. And they 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 are basically taking themselves, meaning their spirits, you know, out of the equation. It's almost like kind of uh, they are, they are saying, "Oh, you are the doctor. You know better than I do." But how come? Do all of us do question this? Maybe sometimes, maybe, maybe more cultured women, maybe, but not even that. Not even, let's say, women with a higher level of education do this sometimes. So that, so I'm, I'm saying this because I, I, I'm so passionate about this because as women, we have to wake up uh, collectively and waking up just meaning let's reclaim our rights of meaning let's pay attention to our body let's cherish our body let's not think immediately if something is painful is happening with me there must be something wrong with me and then go and ask for the verdict of somebody we give power to just because it's got a white gown on but ultimately, if your parents haven't had this knowledge, it's been lost over generations, as you've said, because, for instance, um, you know, I was just basically, as soon as my period started, I knew it might be coming up. It started, was given no information about it and just got on with it, you know, just got on with stemming the blood. 
go on, get on with it yes it wasn't seen as a positive it actually wasn't seen as a negative in my family it was just seen as something that happened to you and the something as soon as you got into um your elder teenage years became something that potentially you could stop from happening to you there was no clear understanding from my parents there was a cycle here that actually was important and that was very influential over my emotions my behaviors and my my overall health so if that hasn't come from my previous generation that probably didn't really come from the one before that so we're going back quite quite a way aren't we in regards to how it's been eroded to how it's now seen today Oh, absolutely. And also the other thing is, in, uh, if we go back in uh, just a few hundreds of years, you know, the healers were generally women. Mm. And uh, herbalists, and then obviously labeled through, in some countries at some point, as witches. So the witch hunt has gone on for so long, and, and it kills so many people. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous, right? So it's better not to look at the, at, at the numbers, because it's the same thing like when, when I, went, I went down to Antarctica, I was looking at numbers of how many whales we killed mm. as a human race. You know? and, and, and again, how accurate are those the stats anyway but it's 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 crucial i feel the pain in myself just reading those data because you think but who are we how can we be so horribly uh cruel and totally detached from everything that should be classified as human human meaning feeling nurturing caring not just a a killing machine (laughs) yeah but it's a disconnection, uh, so, isn't it, effectively? Exactly. It's exactly it. So women, because we give uh, birth and our body is designed to basically nurture another human being inside of ourselves, obviously, obviously we have uh, deeper feelings, deeper sensation. Even just the fact that our genitals are all in the inside rather than uh, the outside, like for a man, right? So, and obviously they are totally complementary. They fit together with a man's genitals. But that's just to show you that our body talks. But if we don't pay attention to it and we start understanding the, the, the language of it, obviously it's so easy to then start uh, going the wrong lane, meaning the wrong lane, feeling, oh, there's something wrong with us. So can I just ask, if you had had this knowledge that you now have, how do you think it would have changed how you experience your life now? Yeah, now, uh, for instance, i give you very practical examples. That day that I was in the workshop, I was thinking, well, one of the first things that came to mind was this. I remember very well when I was in my late teens. I remember feeling really vulnerable as a woman. Uh, by the way, m- my mother was fine. Uh, okay, we didn't have a, 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 a fantastic relationship, but I was a rebel. She was uh, a devoted Catholic uh, woman, you know, so... Um, there's a bit of a gap between the two. But anyway, um, we didn't have a fantastic relationship, but it wasn't the worst possible. You know, I heard of many, many stories much worse than mine. So anyway, but I'm saying this simply to say, uh, bless my mom's heart. She was the best she could be. She had very low self-esteem as well. She would always say yes to my father, even if obviously was obviously Patent that he was proposing stuff that wasn't, that didn't have much sense, but she would just by default say yes. And I realized uh, that that wasn't right. It didn't make any sense, but that was what I was experiencing. And by the way, by then I was already in my teens where I started thinking with my own mind, right? You think of all the condition and we are totally left and absorb one from conception till we are seven, ten, or whatever years old, right? We just absorb what we live in, in the surrounding, the, the, the thoughts and everything, you know, from our parents. So basically through that, we, we absorb 
what they absorb by their parents, etc., etc. So, as you said, we go a long way. Now, when I was in my late teens and 20, early 20s, I remember, of course, already, I'm not that ancient, so I was already living with the media and all the rest of it. They had already been invented by then, you know. I grew up in my, uh, uh, yeah, in the 80s, I was a teenager, so in the early 90s, uh, I was in my 20s, so... uh, I could obviously notice all this bombardment of uh, the press, of the media, of, you know, the film industry and all the rest of it. And you, you absorb all these messages that are basically they are telling you, you are a woman of value just if you look in a certain way, you do certain things, etc., etc., etc. They don't really, there isn't so much that they actually value you as a person or encourages you to discover yourself. Not at all. I mean, in the general stream, mainstream, right? So you can get that only maybe through other ways. Maybe, I don't know, your your family or your relatives or maybe your mom's friends or whatever. But if they are also, like, indoctrinated, basically you don't stand a chance to have anything alternative in there. Unless you are a rebel, as I was, and you start thinking with your mind, you know, with your brain, and you think, but this doesn't make any sense to me. But it's so difficult to break through this conditioning, especially when you're so young. So if I'd known that actually I had something in my body to to value, to follow, because it's my guide, and that guide is personalized to me as a person, as a spirit, right? Because that's what the, the, the menstrual cycle is. It's different for every woman, you know. So if I'd been just given that little few, few, few hints, few tips, not much, I would have anyway developed my self worth in an organic way, meaning that of course you are very different in your teens, then you go into your 20s and you evolve, and then you go into your 30s and your 40s, and basically we evolve. It's just what we do in life, right? So that simple system called the feminine cycle that basically makes you experience four different energy every month is almost like going to university, right? It... it, uh, it makes you, it deepens you in the, uh, in your, the knowledge of yourself. That's what happens. So you don't go outside for inspiration any longer because you know that uh, during that bleeding week, uh, it's good uh, advice to take care of yourself, rest, and uh, pay attention to your dreams and see what comes up for you. So if you have to make a, a, a decision for something important in your life, bleed on it rather than sleep on it, because then you will have inspiration in that week. So you, you, you don't have to go always look out for, 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 for you know, advice, uh, help, or whatever. It, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but first listen to what your body has got to say. It makes sense. Yes, it makes sense, but when you don't have that, uh, it's very, you might be guided by serendipitous events and you might come across it, but it didn't happen to me. It happened only in my 40s. And when I discovered, I thought, oh my God. But then I, especially thinking about my early relationship with with a boyfriend, right? And I remember very well, you know, feeling so uncertain, especially for contraception, you know, feeling so lost and not really knowing. I couldn't go to my mom and ask this type of question, being a good observant Catholic, you know. And um, and, and so what are, what are you left with? Me, yeah, girlfriends, but possibly they are not any better concerning good knowledge, you know. And, and so really you're left on, on, to your means. And it doesn't have to be the way. In the past, I mean, ancient past, women should would gather in circles and or would have now we call them like tent but whatever it doesn't matter the the word the thing is women have this uh, being originally big gatherers they would gather right (laughs) so the 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 whatever knowledge would be handed down from one generation to the other one 
from older women to younger women. And that would create a sense of direction of self-worth, a sense of self, you know, with a capital S, that, of course, ancient women possibly had. And we lost it. We totally lost it. And I, I, and when I say this, obviously, I'm saying this because I think of how I feel and what has been my experience so far. I'm sure I'm in a big club. I'm not the only one. I think you're probably in a very big club indeed, to be honest. Um, <laughs> because I feel that unless you're in uh, or outside of Western, uh, the Western world, uh, I feel to a certain extent we've we've been taken down a route that has clearly um, stopped us from listening to what our bodies tell us, particularly as women, and we've handed over the responsibility to other people. Now it's been a brilliant interview it's been really really fascinating and an hour has already gone um <laughs> which has been the fastest hour I just recently have to say in my life gabriella it's been absolutely and i could carry on talking and talking to you about this whole subject matter so i think we'll get you on at a later date to carry on but gabriella tell people about how they come and work with you to understand their feminine cycle and what it can be telling them yeah, I have um, a one-stop uh, website where people, they can find lots of information through videos, articles, uh, testimonials, and this website is called Flying Inspiration, and uh, flying meaning F-L-Y-N-G, like the act of flying, and then inspiration, like having an inspiration, written together dot com, and um yeah, well, the name it came to me because I'm passionate about flying. I'm learning to become. I'm training as a pilot, and so uh, I have this. This is my my call, but but uh, uh, my call is to help women to fly, <laughs> figuratively speaking, you know, and to make them realize that we have a wondrous body, and the feminine cycle is our best friend, and we can go places if we only, only, only we stop. And, and, and gather again, and, and, and we nurture ourselves, basically. And the planet is ready for that, you know, and men are ready for that. They are craving for that, for that nurture, because, you know, patriarchal society is tough for both. It's not just uh, uh, it's tough for women. Yeah, of course, men are being repressed. There's not much fun, okay. But men are not uh, enjoying it either. They don't know yet. But they, 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 they don't enjoy it either because there's nothing more pleasurable than being a, standing next to an empowered woman or even better having a relationship with an empowered woman. An empowered woman meaning not uh, a woman who's got a big ego. An empowered woman is a woman who is totally grounded in her body, happy to be herself, you know, radiates love. Who doesn't want that? What a message to end on. If you want to know more about Gabriella, I've put the, all the links in the blog on naturalhealthradio.co.uk. So get yourself over there or to my own past, um, website called passporttochange.co.uk. So that all the, all of her information will be on there. And, um, if you're, you've, you know, you want to re-listen to this show, you can find it on the podcast on, uh, SoundCloud, Spreaker, all sorts of places. <laughs> Make it easy for you. Gabriella, thank you so, so much for coming on today to Food for Thought. I very much appreciate it. Debbie, thank you so much for giving me your time to talk about my message and uh, hopefully bring some inspiration to women and men. Well, I, I definitely want to get you back on because I've only managed to cover half the questions. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else i want to ask you the rest of the questions linked to the book um, and particularly around fear in the prison and things like this but anyway we're going to hold that for another show i think <laughs> okay i'm happy to come back <laughs> thank you very much thank you